Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. Our first Patreon goal is 100 Patreon subscribers. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Cinco's or a Jackhammer Chatterbait. For more information on our Patreon, please go check it out in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and today we have a really special guest. Uh, Again, a lot of times there is so much content when you're talking about Fishing the DMV, it's DC, Maryland, Virginia, the surrounding areas. It's almost impossible with me with a full-time job to just figure out where, what, what to approach next, what would be a good conversation. And so I really do rely on you guys to reach out to me and be like, hey, this might be a neat topic to cover. And Brad was really uh, nice to actually reach out to me um, to kind of get this thing going here because High school fishing, it's interesting youth fishing in general in our area because we are so transient it, compared to like if you grew up in Alabama where you have four or five lakes that you could walk to. Here, it's a lot of gas burning. But anyway, we'll get into that uh, with our conversation today. Brad, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thomas, thank you for having me, man. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. So what is your history in fishing just in general? <laughs> Like most people, you know, it goes back to long distance, you know, from when I was young myself. Uh, my younger years, you know, I, I fished a few tournaments. Uh, kind of got out of it a little bit as I grew a little bit older, uh, late teens, you know, early 20s. Um, and then just got up one morning. And I was like, you know what? Uh, I want to get back into fishing. And, you know, by that time, both of my boys were, were born. Uh, one showed more interest than the other. Uh, which is fine. You know, I've, I've never forced any of our kids to do anything that they didn't want to do. But one definitely showed more interest. And uh, at that point, you know, I kind of asked him, how how far do you want to go with this? And his response was, he wants to go to the big stage. So, uh, you know, I've, I've taught him a lot. He's come a long way. Uh, you know, for me now, it's uh, I, I focus more on him and the kids that are on his team. Uh, I, I haven't fished the first tournament myself at all this year. How, how did you guys – now, have you always lived in the Lake Anna area, or was this a move that you did later on when you founded or, or this, this whole high school group got started? We moved out here uh, going on about 15 years ago now, um, and probably about 10 or 12 years ago when I was really getting back into fishing and everything, you know, my wife says – you ought to start a, a fishing team out here for the, for the kids. And I was like, yeah, yeah, but I don't know how to do any of that. Um, our both, All three of our kids were homeschooled at the time. Um, and I was actually contacted by the uh, advisor for the high school fishing team out here. He had heard about my son wanting my son to join. Uh, and I explained to him, you know, my son's homeschooled. He said, it doesn't matter. We want to have him on the team. And I said, okay. Um, so at that point, it was, you know, I was like, well, I guess I don't need to start a team if there's one here, you know, but I had never, you know, growing up, I grew up in, in North Stafford and, you know, we didn't have anything like that when I was growing up. So I had never heard of a high mm-hmm. school fishing team. Uh, like a lot of people now still don't know there's high school, middle school. Some of them don't even know about the collegiate stuff. It's crazy how far it's come, even since I was a kid. And and you know we had the uh, back in the day. I mean, this is way back. It was the 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 Marshall the Bar- Marshall Bassmasters, I think, is what the name of it was. And we did a lot of tournaments down in Orange County in Lake Anna, and it really that was my for lack of a better term, a gateway drug to the collegiate level. Once I figured out like, oh, there's high school fishing. You can compete nationally. My brother got to go to the Bassmaster Classic for the the, the younger division, uh, the Three the three Rivers Bassmaster Classic way back in the day to give you some timestamps for people that are listening. And if it wasn't for those opportunities, it really wouldn't have opened me up to like what there is out there. No, it, it's crazy because it's such a Southern, I don't even know how, it's such a Southern niche and it has expanded. It really has. If you look at like Adrian College, which is up like almost in the Canadian border, and they're pumping out, you know, top 10 teams all the time. But when I was younger, it really was very niche down there. And seeing it take hold in Virginia, and that's probably my next question for you is, since day one that you started this till now, have you seen tremendous growth in, in just 
kids that want to actually get into the the more competitive side of fishing? Yeah, I mean, when when my younger son, uh, he was uh, per bass nation, they can start uh, at, at, as young as second grade or age seven. He was actually in eighth grade. Eighth grade per bass nation, Virginia is is the uh, what I call the magic grade. At eighth grade, they have the choice to either be junior division or high school division. Uh, when they had called me, it was they wanted him on a high school division team. Um, that was going on almost five years ago now. Uh, oh wow! So I've seen a, a, a lot of increase. Uh, this year, Bass Nation has actually split the divisions. It used to only be a north and a south division. They have now split it to a north, a central, and a west division. Uh, what they're trying to do by doing that, and as well as us having our first qualifier here at Lake Anna uh, just two weeks ago, they are trying to get the state to grow. Uh, we are, as Lake Anna Elite Anglers, we are the furthest north team there is. So when talking with the, the director for Bass Nation Youth, his plan is, if he can have a few qualifiers that are more of a, a locally northern, you know, division type, maybe some of these other schools will see that and they'll want to start teams such as, you know, such as North Stafford, where I, where I grew up and where I went to school, uh, Prince William County, Fairfax, things like that. Um, you know, once they see that, that there's tournaments that are going to be closer to them, hopefully that will help those people, you know, even the schools – decide to, to start a team uh, but I have seen a lot of growth since then um, just just for our for ourselves and our own team um, our first year because we're now in the we're now into our fourth season for as a team our first year we only had six total teams all together we were kind of trying to keep it quiet because we weren't sure how fast it was going to grow or how quickly it was going to grow or if we could even handle a, a, a big amount of of youth anglers um here we are now going on like i said our fourth year and we are currently at 34 anglers on the roster that is 10 high school teams seven junior teams from 13 different counties that's that's absolutely insane and it, it, you really are in the prime spot i just know because um the tournament i think you're talking about frederick county bass masters which is associated with jake spate and tackle jared really jared mounts helps out with those guys you know, you guys are in a really prime location right down there at Lake Anna for all of your competitions. And and how does the schedule get created, the tournament schedule, that is? Is that something you have a hand in doing, or is that just basically somebody tells you where this be? This season uh, was the first time I actually um, did have a little bit of a hand in, in setting the Northern Division's tournament schedule. Um, mainly, again, because Bass is trying to get more teams to come from this Northern area. Um, he, you know, they had called me and asked me, Hey, where would you guys like to go for your first qualifier? Because you have so many different bodies of water in that area. You know, of course we have Lake Anna, we have the Rappahannock, you know, we have the James, we have the chick. And, and I looked at him and, I, and you know, talking to him on the phone, I said, you know, we've asked and asked and asked over the past couple of years for a qualifier at Anna. We want to have a qualifier on Anna. Um, he then ran that by the other advisors for the North Division. Everybody was on board, of course, because it's, you know, for the most part, it's within a two-hour drive for everyone. Um, and then he asked me, you know, our second and our third qualifiers were, were already set in stone. Uh, that will be all three divisions next month on October 7th and 8th down on Kerr or Bugs Island, whatever, however you want to call it. Um, and then he asked me, you know, for our fourth, where would we like to go? And of course, I'm. You're asking me, so I'm thinking about where where our anglers love to fish. Where myself personally, I love to fish is the Chickahominy River. Um, so he, again, same way he threw that out to the other advisors for the North Division, they were all on board. And then he asked the Central Division, and as soon as they heard Chickahominy, the Central Division is coming up to fish Chickahominy. So they will be there at the same time we are. Um, so the way their system works is they are able to break it down north, central, west. Uh, that's how it will be next month. All three divisions will occur fishing second, third qualifiers. Who are the other advisors that they have to pass it? Is, is it all the other high schools in the area or? Some, some are high schools. Um, we, with us, 
we're not affiliated with any high school system at all. Um, we are what Bass calls a community club. Um, mm. f- when we first started this, uh, it was right there after COVID. Uh, of course, I-, I remember it like it was yesterday. I mean, we were on. restrictions kind of got lifted i called the director i'm like hey what do we got to do to get these kids back on the water and he said you need to contact the school see what the school's plan is um and i did and they said they were not going to have a fishing team so i contacted the director back i'm like okay they're not going to have a team now what do i do uh and that's when he informed me of you need to start a community club uh you need to get a letter of denial from the school which it, which we did uh, and once we did that that was kind of all right now where do we go and and essentially what we did was took the roster from the high school team sent out an email this is what we're thinking about doing let's just see who's going to show up we're going to have a quick little meeting and that night we had 37 people show up between anglers parents and boat captains we explained to them hey this is what we're thinking about and it was kind of a unanimous decision of why hasn't somebody done this before uh let's go with it so that's what we did gotcha yeah that's interesting. So, so does that mean if people, you get to vote on where, let's say flip it around, uh, if somebody else, another club wants to vote on a place that you're going to have a tournament, does that mean you get to vote on that thing then too? Or is it just a set council that ends up having the final decision? It, with with Bass Nation, you have the advisors for all of the teams. Some, like I say, some of them are high school teams. Some of them are community like we are. Community clubs. Um, okay. So what they do is they have an advisors meeting. Uh, they will lay it out. Hey, this is where where we can go and then it's kind of up to the advisors to decide um you know again i know a lot of the advisors from the north and the central divisions the west division i don't know a whole lot of them Uh, there's just not very many teams over that area Uh, jared is jared mounts is one of the gentlemen i know Uh, rick williams who does fludana's team Uh, he's another one of their advisors and like I say, when we do those advisors meeting, everybody that can be is on there. And we all sit down with the directors of Bass Nation and discuss, hey, this is where we would like to go. And the directors are telling us this is what we can and can't do. Um, mm. You know, the Potomac is one of the ones that, you know, when I mentioned the bodies of water, the Potomac for Bass Nation is kind of off limits, uh, or at least for off limits for the youth, mainly because, mm. you know, as well as I do, when the storm blows up up out there, it comes in pretty fierce uh, and they don't want to have, you know, 60, 80 kids in bass boats sitting out there with a storm coming up. So, but the chick is okay. Now, do you mean the chick reservoir or do you mean the chick? Uh, the river. Creek. The river. The river. Are they allowed to go through into the James or is it a cutoff that you can't go into the James then? That morning of the qualifier it will all depend on what the weather is going to do. If, uh, and this is coming from the director himself for Bass Nation Youth. Uh, if they're calling for, you know, 10, 12 mile an hour winds, you're not allowed to go any further than the Route 5 bridge. Uh, hmm. The James right there gets really, really wide and it gets pretty crazy right there. Uh, I know last year they were allowed to go out to the James. Uh, the year before we were not. We had Interesting. Huh. Yeah, it's so weird that the Potomac's completely off, but the James has that asterisk. But I guess it makes sense because worst case scenario, you can limit them to just the chick which is probably a better safety concern and and the reason i brought that because like first off i'm actually interested like how this all works when you guys organize tournaments because virginia you know i don't have to tell you this we really lack a lot of of water to have good competitions on and i know in the comment section when i mentioned like you know people have bfls on indian lake which is only like four thousand plus acres in ohio and i think lake anna should have more competitions On, on with that said why couldn't you have youth tournaments on Lake Chesden or some of these smaller places to get reps in. Does it, does Bass State, like it has to be, you know, so many acres or things like that, that you're allowed to host events? They do not. Um, the biggest thing with, with them is you just gotta make sure you have hotel capacity. Um, that was that was kind of an issue we were thinking we were gonna have here with Anna if we brought everybody in for that tournament is because we don't have the hotel capacity. Uh, if you want to stay in a hotel, you're going to need to drive 35, 40 minutes away. Uh, hmm. Just by doing it with the North Division, like say most everybody was within an hour and a half to two hour drive. 
I think uh, Jared and them over in Frederick had the longest drive. Yeah. Um, so it was really no need for a hotel. Um, Chesden, I mean, we we actually asked our anglers this year uh, where they wanted to go just to have our team tournaments because we do a monthly team tournament. Uh, just oh, keep, cool. Oh, yeah. Every month we have a team tournament. Uh, we generally start September before our first qualifier to give the new kids that have come on board time to fish with their partner uh, if they haven't done that yet. But then we have a team tournament every month all the way to June. June is our last team tournament of the season. June also decides who our top five will be for our championship in July. Mm. Uh, so we had asked the kids where, you know, where do you guys want to go? We put a poll out on our, we have a private Facebook group and a private messenger group for the team only. Uh, we put a poll out there for them. Uh, I think we had eight different bodies of water on there for them to vote on. Uh, the chick, they were, they all wanted to go back to the chick. Which I'm, I'm 100% okay with that. Um, so we're going to have a team tournament down there in April. And then Chesden was the other one that was, was very highly requested. So we're going to do a team tournament on Chesden in May. Uh, I'm only an hour and 15 minutes from Chesden, but I've never fished the place. I'm excited to go down there. It, it, that's the frustrating part. And, and sometimes people say it's the boat ramp or hotel, but if Bass and the VFLs would have their way, it'd basically be cursed 700 times and then the James and the Potomac once. And it's sad because there's so many other bodies of water that are... The Aquacon Reservoir is still the number one fishery in Virginia, period. The average is like six pounds, but like literally no one knows of that place. Granted, it's a little bit smaller, but it's interesting. And I'm glad, I'm proud of you for like doing that, expanding it a little bit, that there are other fisheries that'll test you different ways. Yep, 100%, 100%. That's, you know... Smith Mountain used to be on our Bass Nation schedule. Um, I'm so glad it's not anymore. I dislike Smith Mountain greatly. <laughs> it's not my style. It's, you know, that deep clear water is just not my style. Uh, some of the kids were a little upset that they pulled it. Some of them were just as happy about it as I am. Um, this year, Gaston was taken off the list. We added Anna. Uh, I had about half the team wanted to go to Gaston. Half the team wanted to stay here. Uh, I mean, I like fishing Gaston. Uh, to me, Gaston is is what I call a sister lake to Anna. They fish very similar. Uh, Kerr, not so much. You know, total different. Yeah. You know, totally different. Um, I don't mind fishing down there. Uh, usually when we go for a qualifier, we do get a day or two of practice before they go out for that qualifier. Um, so we kind of try to figure some things out. Uh, you know, Chesden, again, like I say, it's one of those places that I was really wanting to go to, and I'm glad that the kids chose that. Um, I think, just my personal opinion, Chesden may be another one, like you said, with, with Aquaquan Reservoir, is, is a very, not very well-known uh, body of water for, for the area. Uh, there was a tournament there just this past Saturday. It was 26 pounds and some change it took to win that tournament. <laughs> I watched mm. coming out of there in June and July, and they were 27, 28 pounds with eight, nine pound kickers just to win tournaments. That's, so dude, that's freaking insane. And and yeah, I mean that's the thing too is I always like if you're doing a local a local group like this where it's not 200 boats, go to some of these places that really are going to be pulling out some bags. And, and and with that said, like are you allowed to have like trolling motor lake only tournaments as well? Is that help expand out at all for us, for our team tournaments, we can, yeah. uh, there are several in the Fredericksburg area that are trolling motor only. Um, there are hunting run things like that. You can have the big motor on there. You just have to have it raised up. Um, one of our anglers is actually my, my son's tournament partner, uh, through his little high school deal. He does a, a small fishing team at his high school that is electric only. Uh, so they fish like Mott's Run, Hunting Run, things like that. Uh, so I kind of leaned on him a little bit to ask some information on that. Because, uh, again, I, I'm all for it. You know, it, the more the, the more different bodies of water these kids can fish, the more experience they're going to get because every one of them is going to be different. What are, and this is something really, I think, let's put this in the episode now. If a kid and a dad want to get involved, and I I. I historically remember this conversation you and I had, you can't just have a jet boat or a tunnel hall and just come up to competitions, right? Is, is there certain parameters on what boat you're allowed to bring? There is. Uh, 
a lot of our, our rules that we follow as a team, uh, we took some of the rules from Bass Nation, uh, and, and, and that is one of their rules is, you know, no jet boats, uh, no cumbersome vessels such as pontoons, things like that. Uh, it has to be at least 16 foot long, has to have a foot pedal trolling motor, has to have a working live well, and the motor on the back can be no bigger than a 250. Uh, <clears throat> we have yet had anybody want to come on board with a pontoon boat. Uh, I will tell you, we have a, right now, I mean, we have a 17 foot John boat with a 9.9 on the back of it. But he's got a working live well. He's got a working foot pedal trolling motor. Uh, very first tournament of the season we actually held at the end of August. Uh, those are two junior uh, anglers. They are new to the team. Uh, they went out there and kicked all the high schoolers' butts. <laughs> so it's kind of awesome. He's been doing that out of a you know 17 foot John boat with a 9.9 on the back of it. That's freaking awesome. And did I want to make sure I heard you correctly? Did you say somebody was thinking about bringing a pontoon boat? We have not had one yet. Oh, oh, thank God. Okay, good. Yeah, that like I say, we try to follow that part of the rule with bass. Um, you know, of course, with the working live well, we're, we're looking out for the the health and, and safety of the fish. We we don't want to have dead fish coming back in on our team tournaments. Um, now I know there was uh, a bit of an issue at one of the qualifiers last year uh, on the chick. Matter of fact, uh, there was a team unfortunately that did get disqualified. Not not one of our teams. Um, their boat captain was a backup boat captain, and he brought a jet boat in. Um, of course, per Bass Nation, he can't have that. you know. So, unfortunately, those kids didn't get the opportunity to fish that day. Um, they're back fishing this year. I just saw them two weeks ago. They were in a normal bass boat. <laughs> now, is that a – and that's a bat, just to make sure we clarify, that's a bass rule. So, yep. if you needed an extra boat for a – a regular in-house tournament, those rules are a little more flexible compared to a certified bass competition? We do flex a little bit. Um, you know, I don't tell people they have to have a bass boat because you don't have to have a bass boat to go out there and catch fish. You don't have to have a bass boat to go out there and, and win these tournaments. Again, the boy's got a 17-foot John boat with a 9.9 on it. Mm. So it can be done. Uh, so working live well, number one, and it can't be a jet or a tunnel haul would be number yeah. two. No. So gotcha. those, those are two okay. things. Like I say, we, we kind of took out from Bass's rules. Um, I know it may not bring a couple anglers or a boat captain in if they don't, if they don't have, if they have something like that. Uh, but then when they're coming on board, we're also, we don't tell them they have to fish Bass Nation, but we kind of lean toward we want them to go fish the Bass Nation stuff. Um, you know, it, they don't have to, but we do lean forward towards that. Um, you know, we do. We have a team on here now that uh, they've got a. I mean, they can't fish Bass Nation, unfortunately. They've got a three hundred on the back of the boat. So I mean, we oh, a little yeah, they're into the spectrum. <laughs> we, we've been rules a little bit, um, but those boys too. Again, they drive two and a half hours to get here for a monthly team tournament. Holy moly. They live all the way up near uh, Stanton. Whew. Damn. It's so funny because I saw a comment section somewhere. It was on a, uh, a a local Facebook, and it was a, it was, it was a transplant guy, and he just complained so much about this driving, and it's this is what we do here. Like, I'm sorry. If, if you live in Northern Virginia, guess what? You're going to go to Kerr about 96 times this year, and it sucks, but that's just kind of how the schedule works. Um just more power to also the parents out there that do that and commute. I mean, you thought soccer games were a pain. It's different for these tournaments when it comes well, to driving. That, and that's, that's, we've got two teams like that. Um, our other team, they are new this year as well. Uh, the one angler lives in Broadway, Virginia. Uh, his partner lives in uh, Folks Run, Virginia, which is almost mm. Virginia. So, you know, again with them, they've got a two, two and a half hour drive. Um, you know, the boat captain's the one. He lives over in, in the Falks Run area. Um, his son is, is partnered up with the other young man, but they they want to be on it. They they want to do it, and they make that drive. That's insane. Now we we've mentioned bass a lot. Um, growing up, at least, and, and they still do this on the collegiate side of things. You have major league fishing, or back when I was a kid, it was FLW. Yep. Do they still have any presence in the high school realm, or are they just collegiate? 
They do. Um, not so much here in Virginia. I know uh, there was a what's called a tri-state uh, national or it was a tri-state state championship deal on Anna. Uh, it was April-ish. Uh, and that was uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Uh, and it was an MLF deal. Uh, they only had like eight votes for all three states. All three states. Wow. Yeah. And that was, you know, I mean, I went over, we went over and watched. Uh, I took a couple, couple of the kids off the team. The older kids on the team wanted to go over and watch their, their weigh-ins and everything. Uh, I know a couple of the advisors for two of the teams out of, one out of Maryland and one out of uh, – uh, Pennsylvania. Um, so it's kind of neat to go over and actually meet those guys in person at, other than talking to them on the phone or, or through emails or stuff like that. Uh, and just kind of see how MLF does things versus Bass Nation. Um, you know, for us, I think even if MLF came to Virginia for something, I think we would probably stick with Bass Nation. And, and with with that said, with, with the events and where you guys go, which event next year, minus Lake Anna, are, are you looking forward to the most? Probably, to be honest with you, probably the chick. I, I really like I really like fishing down there personally. Um, I love watching the kids fish down there. I know what can be caught out of there. Um, you know, I think our first season – our first qualifier was supposed to have been Smith Mountain when we first started. Uh, that got canceled on us. The last qualifier we were able to make was was the Chick. Um, and we actually had one of our teams go down. At that time, we were still only six teams total. We had one of our teams go down and win first place in that qualifier with a 20, I want to say they had like a 20-pound, 16-ounce bag. Whew. Damn, that's pretty good. The Chick, the chick holds them. Uh, a lot of guys are now starting to realize that the James holds those fish now because of, you know, the tournaments they're holding out of Osborne. A lot of those guys are making the run to the chick. They come back, they let the fish go to Osborne. Those fish are staying in the James. They're not making that trip all the way back to the chick. Yeah, I've, I've had a couple of people on this just say, like, how the James is so is like cyclical where it's like you'll have two years in a row where the chick is on fire. And then everyone drives down there and moves them, you know, to Osborne. And then Osborne is on fire. Uh, it's just, it's so interesting how that river has, it's a tale of two halves. You have the Chick James and then you have the James proper, uh, how that place fishes, which is so interesting compared to, you know, I'm a river rat. I, I grew up fishing the Potomac and that's just, it's, it's completely different. Like how you break that place down compared to the James. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, I mean, the Chick, I think what I like about it so much is, is I love being in a Cypress forest. I love getting in the trees. Um, you know, you go in there and, and you're flipping something at your cypress knees and you have the chance of catching, you know, setting a hook on a 10 or 12 pound large mouth. I think that's what yes. I like to talk about. And, you know, a huge shout out to to really the organizations prior and then DWR, Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources, you know, for to continuing to stock the F1s in there to keep that thing, you know, really on fire. But, you know, we talk about that. Lake Anna, you know, I just, and then guys, I'm pretty sure, because everything's pre recorded and I'm terrible with organizing it, but I'm pretty sure the Odenkirk episode will have dropped by this point. Uh, John Odenkirk is the guy that runs Lake Anna. What he has done there, and we had him on the show, and he talked about the F1s we've stocked aren't even two years old yet. The Dirty 30 is going to be a small bag, and he predicted that. That's going to be – it's going to be insane what that lake pumps out here in the next five to six years. Yep, and, and I 100% believe it. Um, you know, since they put them in just shy two years ago, um, I've seen an uptick in, in you know, the quality of fish. Um, and, and you know yourself, you've heard a lot of people say, Anna's the Dead Sea or the One Fish Lake, things like that. They always say, oh, it's the local." That, that only catch the fish. Yes, to some degree, uh, Anna can be hard, especially if you've never fished this place. Uh, a lot of times what I tell people to do, if you really want to go out and try to learn Lake Anna, hire a guide. You know, go out, go out with one of the guides that are on the lake. They will give you a kind of a rundown. And, and, you know, most of those guys that are out here, they, they don't mind if you, you know, hey, come back to that spot, you know, um, 
for us, like I say, with us being local, uh, of course, we did hear that at, the, at our state qualifier here. Um, so it, it's not just pro level or collegiate level. You you hear the same thing at the high school level of, you know, that's their home water. You're not going to be able to beat them. But some of those other teams, did, you know, uh, I've seen that myself with going down to Kerr, uh, the high school team down there. Yes, they're good at the qualifier, but sometimes when it came to that state championship, you know, they lived there and they, they choked. You know? I, I also really think with the subaquatic vegetation that's growing in Lake Anna now and the fact that their plan that the state is not to eradicate it, but to keep it in there to an extent, I think that's going to help change it enough to where you're going to be able to go out there in five or six years if you're not a local and it's not going to be as hard. Yep. Kerr, for an example, that place is so hard because there's just nothing in the bottom. That place is as clean as a pool. And unless you're, you're chasing bluebacks and stuff, you need to spend years graphing to find like the one stump they missed. And I think if there's more cover in Lake Yannick, that's just going to make it that much better of a fishery in general. That's, and, and that's, you know, this year I've seen a, a, a good amount of hydrilla in the lake. Um, past few years, you'd find a little bit of it here, a little bit of it there. Uh, this year, it's, it's different pockets. I'm starting to see more of it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, some of the homeowners don't like it. It's, it's covering my dock and I can't get my boat out. And then they go out there and they're dumping stuff in the lake to try to kill it. Um, if they only understood that, you know, you, you do have to keep it under control to an extent, but it is a natural filter. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody always hears, you know, summertime for us down here, they'll see the, the harmful algae bloom. You know, it's a top end of the lake. If you leave that hydrilla alone, it will help filter some of that out. You won't mm -hmm. have that as much as what, you know, what what it shows on the, the Facebook page. And uh, but like I say, you've got some homeowners that they don't want it around their docks. They're out there dumping stuff in the water without asking, without being told to. Um, you know, again, you want to keep you want to have it, but you just got to keep it under control. Yeah, and, and the water willow has also made a huge comeback from yep. years prior. And, and I didn't even know this until, you know, that interview, which was that grass carp can actually, they'll actually destroy water willow too, especially when it's coming up. They'll eat that as well. And, you know, he doesn't have data, but he just has a correlation that when the grass carp started to die off from the 80s and 90s, you started to see the water willow come back. And, and so, I'm, guys, I'm telling you, Lake Anna, Chesden, and Occoquan Reservoir, those those three places, I think Occoquan's in its prime now, but I think Chesden and Lake Anna, oh my God, it's it's going to be something here coming up. It really is. A couple, couple more years, and I, I agree with you 100%. It's going to be, uh, they will be probably the two two main fisheries in the state. You know, I don't count the Potomac as being in Virginia, you know, uh, so in my opinion, it's it's going to be Anna, and it's probably going to be Chesden with, with what now, they're producing now. Do you do anything with with your with your group on the warm side, or the or as they call it, the private side of Lake Anna at all? We do. Um, we like like I said before, we hold tournaments once a month, uh, so we will shift to the hot side or warm side uh, November, and we oh, will cool. stay on this side till March, and then we go back to the cold side. Um, you know, with, with us having this team, we do have a lot of, uh, local sponsorship. Uh, Dominion Energy is one of our biggest sponsors. Uh, hmm. really? Oh yeah. They, we have two boat captains that work over there. Um, uh, when they heard about what we're doing with these kids and who we are, uh, again, like I say, when we started this, we, we went above and beyond what any school system ever could do. Uh, we made a decision. We wanted Lake and Elite Anglers to be a business by the state of Virginia, so we hired a CPA. So we are a business by the state of Virginia, and we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Oh, that's really cool. So how did you get like, how did you get these boat captains involved? Like, that's a cool story. How did you get the power company involved? Like I say, uh, when we started, we, we had sent out that email. We had that meeting uh, from the high school team itself. Uh, some of those, I think we had – one of those boat captains was on the high school team. Uh, another one joined uh, on a bit later. Uh, but even then, when the high school team, they weren't, the Dominion was not sponsoring the high school team. Um, they like to do a lot with nonprofits. Uh, and, and it's, you know, when it's a nonprofit for kids, that's even, mm. 
even more of a boost. Um, and then, of course, with us being right here, local, you know, they were they were 100 percent all about it and on board. As soon as, as soon as both boat captains went in there and mentioned something to their, I guess their PR person or, or whatever she does, um, she was like, "I just need the information. We want to help." Hmm. That is really cool. I mean, and that's more more power to to them for actually getting involved with you guys because that's interesting. Having a nuclear powered lake like that, or a, a, a lake in which the water temperature, you know, stays elevated year round. It, is it a tale of two different lakes or do they fish the same? Totally different. Um, this time of year, uh, right now I can tell you the water temperature on my side, right now we're in an outage. So they're doing an outage. They're doing the uh, uh, maintenance and everything on the, on the reactors. Uh, so one reactor is down. When they do that, they, they're not pumping as much water through. Uh, so generally when both reactors are running this time of year, you know, water temperature on the warm side will be right at the end of what they call lagoon one in the mid nineties. Uh, oh, wow. I mean, I was out on my, on this side last Thursday cause I live on, on the warm side. I was out last Thursday. Uh, I went as far away from the planet as I could and the coolest water I could find was still 82. That's insane. Good that, that's, Lord. That's what's so nice about it in the wintertime is, and that's why everybody wants to be able to get on this side in the wintertime is because you know, January and February, there's nowhere else in Virginia you're throwing topwater walking baits. Uh, water temperature is 72, 74 degrees. These bass don't know that it's wintertime. They just know they see something walking on the surface. They got to eat it. So it, it definitely is. They, they're two different fisheries. That's for sure. Does it shut down in the summertime, the bite window? Like when it gets that hot, like you said you're running away from it, so to speak. Do they get sluggish or are they accustomed to it? I'm assuming they're accustomed to it. They're accustomed to it. Um, there, There's one spot on this side of the lake that I don't want to mention where it is just, just because I don't want to give it away. But uh, the fish will set up there right about the second week of June. And they will stay there all the way through August. And I will tell you right now, the water temperature stays about 94 to 97. And I, I just, that's incredible that they actually bite at that. It's that's bath water. That's insane. It is. And, and you know, the crazy thing is, is when you pull up on that spot, uh, the amount of bait that is there, that's why the fish are there. Uh, the bait stays in there that entire time. And, and it's nothing to pull up on that spot first thing in the morning and nobody be around. And within 20 minutes, you've caught 30 fish. Now they're all what I call cookie cutters. Uh, what I mean by that, you know, they're all the same size, a pound and a half, two, two and a half pounders. Uh, you have a few threes and fours mixed in, but if you just want to go over and have some fun and catch a bunch of fish real quick, that's, that's definitely the place to do it. What's the big, what, what is your personal best on the, on the warm side? On the warm side, uh, last year I pulled a 697. That's the biggest. That's size not fish. bad. Yeah. That's, that's a good size fish for this side. Um, my biggest bag on this side was me and my son. Uh, we had a 2165 with our five fish. That was our biggest bag on this side. On the warm side? Yep. Damn, dude. That's so funny because I've heard that about cookie cutters. Like, everything's a pound and a half. That's it. Like, it's that's shocking to me that there's actually that kind of weight over there. Wow. There is. You just, like I say, you just, when they set up on this side of the lake, they will set up and stay in that same area for three or four weeks at a time. Uh, if you get the bait moving in there, they're going to stay in there with that bait. They will not move. Hmm. That's interesting. So, I mean, and that's really a schooling thing, which kind of ties into this. Are, are, are you guys running forward-facing sonar? And when it comes to forward-facing sonar, skipping a jig, do you guys do, like, classes on the water work just to kind of help get to that next level for some of these, for some of the youth? Some of our boat captains do. Uh, I personally, I do not have it. Um, my son, of course, he's he's keeps pushing me, Dad. We need to get it. We need to get it, and I understand it. You know, uh, I guess I'm still kind of old school with it. Uh, everything we that I've taught him is all off of just old knowledge and, and knowing what to do. Um, you know, but we do have some boat captains that have it, and of course, they're teaching their anglers, you know, how to use it, how to read it. Um, I have nothing wrong with that. I, mean, I see nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Yeah, it's just always interesting to me about like the the learning aspect and teaching that stuff because 
it's one thing if you grow up if you just fish like the chick or the potomac where i'm at um that that shallow four foot or less but because you get an advantage you really do but when you get away from that and you have to go super deep clear or you're competing against guys on the tva system it's a completely different style of fishing and how do you make sure their skill sets translate? Because I've always heard that from even the Frederick County guys. It's when you go from that to Lake Murray in South Carolina, it's like, holy crap, this is a completely different way to fish. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, I, with, with, um, with forward faces, sonar, stuff like Smith Mountain, I can see it's probably a huge advantage there. Um, I don't know how much of an advantage it would be because with, at the Chick, there's, there's really not a whole lot of deep water in the Chick. Uh, you know, you might be able to stay in the channel and find a little bit of deep water, but you know how that place is with the tide change and everything. I don't know mm-hmm. how much advantage it would be there. Uh, of course, here on Anna, it's, it's definitely an advantage. You're, you're, you're seeing those 20 and 30 pound bags come in, and I know those guys are using it. Um, but for me, like I say, again, I don't have it. Um, I don't fault anybody for having it. You know, it, for me, it's, I guess if I'm going to fish a tournament against those guys, and if I can go out there and beat them, I guess for me, it's it's a little more of a pat on the back. Hey, you beat these guys that have it. You don't. Um, so I don't I don't get upset with anybody. You know, I know, I know there's going to be tournaments I'm going to fish that without having it, I'm going to get beat. But I'm going to do everything I can to the best of my ability and knowledge-wise to hopefully not have that happen. I just actually pulled up the uh, the Bass Nation. I think this is it. The uh, September tenth, uh, Lake Anna North High School Bass Nation, or yeah, Bass Nation of Virginia Youth. I think this is the uh, this is the right stats. Twelve pounds, like twelve fifty six, twelve fifty two, eleven seventy three, eleven thirty nine. Looking for the kicker. Where the heck is the kicker? What's the biggest kicker we got? About three and a half. Is that yeah. right? I think it's like three, three and a half. half. That's not- that's not bad at all. I mean, that, that's really good for that, you know, that time of year on that body of water. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I think that was a three and a half. Um, and then and when you look at the, that, that should be on the high school side of things. And then there was a junior stats as well. Uh, I think it was 11 and some change on the junior side of things. Uh, I believe I have it printed off around here somewhere. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you know who won? Is it Caleb? Uh, Caleb Johnson and Chase Murphy. All right. Yep. Uh, 11.76. And then we follow that up with 9.01 for second place. I, I mean, it's just to see these kids be this competitive is insane. And to see how many kids showed up for this. That's, that's what's so impressive. Yep. Wow. Was, uh, like I say, when, when, when the divisions got split, I knew things were going to get a little bit smaller because the, the North division used to run pretty much from us all the way down to Mecklenburg. Uh, for a qualifier, you would have 65 to 75 votes. Uh, now that everything's been split, most of the, the North division, I think our qualifier wise, we're going to be right around 30 votes. Uh, and it'll be about the exact same on the uh, central side of things, right around 30 votes on the high school side, uh, mm. the 20 on the junior side. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Brad, I really can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Um, please tell the people at home, like, if they want to get their kid involved, like, how do they get in contact with you? Uh, easiest way to do it is uh, check us out on Facebook. We do have a public Facebook page like at, at Lake Anna Elite Anglers. Um, the phone number that is on there is my personal phone number. Uh, we have we have a team email that's uh, Lake Anna Elite Anglers at yahoo.com. Or there is a uh, button on there just to send us a message through Messenger. Um, you know, one of the questions, like the very first question I ask when parents do contact us um, is, do you have a bass boat or do you know somebody that has a bass boat? Uh, we, for us, just like every other high school team, the hardest thing to get is boat captains. Um, you know, I, I've talked with several of the guys that are out in my area to try to bring them on as boat captains. Um, some of them are, yeah, I want to do this, absolutely. And others are like, I don't want to take two kids out on my boat, you know, I'm, I'm scared they're going to make a mess or this is going to happen or that can happen. There, there is a lot that can happen, but it, it's all, I try to tell these guys, if you take two kids out and see the joy that you're giving those children, the, the smiles you're putting on their faces, 
you're mentoring those kids to do what we do as anglers and to be better. I think, I think if some of those guys would give these kids a chance, they would, they would see that it's, it's worth it. But I like guys, to ask, ask, check us out. Um, you know, I want to see our team grow. I want to see the other teams that are around us grow. Um, so anybody that's that's even in like the Frederick area, up around the Winchester area, there is there is Jared Mounts and those guys out of Frederick that, that have their team. Um, Green County, they have a small team. Uh, Madison County has a small team. So I would love to see these teams grow, not just ours. Guys, again, link in the episode description to everything we talked about, including website, phone number, everything, so you can get in contact with Brad. Is there any sponsors, anybody else you'd like to give a shout out to? Oh, we have so many. Um, you know, some of our biggest sponsors, you know, of course, again, Dominion, they're a huge sponsor for us. Cash and Rods is a huge sponsor for us. Uh, Profound Outdoors, uh, Wicked Weights, they're a tungsten sponsor of ours. Biz Baits, uh, down out of North Carolina, they're a big sponsor of ours. Uh, and then, like I say, we have so many local sponsors. Um, you know, we have uh, Illusion Wraps. Uh, they're up there out of Fredericksburg. Uh, we have Fishtails uh, right here on Anna. Fishtails is is kind of like our home uh, little marina. Um, can't say enough about Dave Fauntleroy and the, and the people that run Anna Point Marina. Uh, we love going over there with those guys. They're always so nice to us. Um, you know, theme and agricultural, uh, you know, it's just so many people that, that are behind what these kids are doing and behind this team. Uh, I can't thank them enough. Uh, you know, without them and without the, the boat captains and without our parents, these kids wouldn't be able to do what they're doing. They wouldn't be able to go out and compete. And, and you know, yes, some of them play football, some of them play baseball. Most all of them would rather, rather fish. That's the biggest thing That's out there. Good stuff. Well, sir, thank you so much for coming on. Again, guys, link in the episode description and everything we talked about today. A uh, huge shout out to my Patreon. If it wasn't for you guys, this show wouldn't be possible. Again, Patreon and supporter of the week is Josh Reese. Josh, thank you so much for helping support the show. If you guys want to check out the Patreon, as you can hit our goal. Once we hit our major goal, we're going to actually start our own nonprofit, the Future Fish Foundation, so we can privately stock some of our local waterways. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing in DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.